Okay, so here we've got on the screen um, three different versions of the same map exported from Dungeon Alchemist at different resolutions. So I've got a 72, as you can see right up here, and then I've got a, well, you can't see it here, but uh, let me do this and I'll, there we go, at 150. And then I've got one here at 300. Okay, there we go. So when you look at these, you can really see the difference in the detail and the um, quality. Now, this is really zoomed in. So I zoomed it in so I could show you the difference in the quality. If you zoom out on these maps, your players probably are not going to notice unless they zoom in to so get a really get a good close look at their token. But if they're not comparing it to any other map, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal, honestly. Um, if you like I said, it depends on you know how powerful your computer is. If you've got a low power computer, then export your maps to 72 DPI. Honestly, I don't think your players are really going to notice a difference if all your maps are at this resolution. You know, if you get, get a decent computer, go mid range and go with the 150. Um, again, if you're like me, I mean, I've got a decent computer because I do stream it and I record videos, but I don't make big maps in Dungeon Alchemist. I just don't have the patience for that. And I prefer to take my players' tokens from one map to the other um, rather than have them just go wandering around because my players go nuts sometimes. So I just prefer to make small maps and have more resolution and then piece them together that way. And then because um, I just think they look better. But then again, I got a computer that can handle the 300 DPI. Again, it just depends on how powerful your computer is and how powerful, um, you know, the computer is for your players. If if I wasn't streaming, if I wasn't recording videos and didn't have this channel, I probably would go with the 150 or 72 DPI because, again, I don't think your players are really going to notice, um, especially if all your maps are at that same resolution. OK, so next I want to talk about what happens if you make your map too dark in Dungeon Alchemist and you export it over to Fantasy Grounds, because I ran into this situation and I have to imagine that others out there have run into it as well. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at that. OK, so this is the same map I've been working with um, throughout this whole video on the screen here, and I want to go ahead and, um, first of all, show you some occluders, and then I want to show you what happens if you render your map where it is too dark and you bring it over into Fantasy Ground. So let's look at the occluders first, because I, I promised you that I had done a map with all those included, and I wanted to show you how I made my occluders real quick. Okay, so here's all my occluders right here, and like I said earlier, I use the window, um, un, the untoggleable window. And um, the reason why I like this one, and they're yellow, that's how you can tell the difference, is because then my players can see through it, but they can't, the, it blocks their movement, just like a window does. So let me show you how this works. And I wanna show you why I have these occluders like this on this giant head statue. So let's jump back over here to Dungeon Alchemist. And here's why I have the occluders like that. So if you rotate this and you come down here and take a look at the way this is, the players can actually go under the chin and the jaw of this statue, which I thought was pretty cool because what if they move under there, they get the idea of moving under there and then there's something up there like they could reach up inside the statue and grab something. Well, I want to be able to reflect that they could move that far under the statue. So when I took a look at this, it looked like that they could go about as far as, let me line this up better so we can look at it. Um, it looks like it lines up the jaw here with right about here on the statue. So let's jump back over to Fantasy Grounds and I'll show you how I did this. Now, obviously I can't rotate in here because this is a top down view, but I'll zoom in here. So as I said, that the um, chin, well, actually, now that I'm looking at this, I should really have the occluders come out this far. So now I'm going to adjust the occluders. So let's go ahead and drag this one down here. Maybe we'll drag this one here, this one here. Yeah, this is making more sense um, than when I was doing this earlier. Um, it just wasn't looking right when I was doing it earlier, and now I know why. Okay, this occluder actually needs to be down there 
this one, whoops, this one here, and then, then this one here. Okay, so that probably works a lot better now. So now let's go ahead and let's put Laura Croft back in here so we can see how this works. So let's go ahead and come back over here to play. Let's put it on player preview. Let's turn the lighting on. Let's get Laura Croft in here, our intrepid adventurer. We need to put a, a, a torch light on here. So let's make sure we have her, well, first of all, let's make sure we have token light selected. She is selected. We're gonna choose torch. We're gonna put that on here. Okay, now Laura has a torch. Let's come back to play. And let's take a look here. Now I have the drums so that she can't move through those. Because I had the idea that maybe something small, like a small creature or something could be hiding behind the drums. So um, she can't move past those. Um, but actually, now that I think about it, using the window, she can see right through them. So that really didn't make any sense. Um, I might choose a different occluder like the terrain occluder. But I like this one because I figured that the statue was so big that the players should be able to see it. But look, now that I don't have the occluders here, they can go about right here. So what if my players get the idea, they go under here and I just explain, hey, you've got under the chin of the statue. And then I wait for them to see what they're going to do next. And they're like, OK, I'm going to look up and maybe there's like an opening or something and there's something hidden in there. Um, so with this, they can't go past these jars. So I think yeah, I'm going to change these back to, to the terrain occluder. Um, so that they can't see past them until they actually go on top of them. But these um, make sense to me to make as window, but again, they can still see past them. So now that I'm thinking about it, I think I need to make all make this a terrain occluder, um, even though they can go past it. Um, the statue here, I think it makes sense that it's a window occluder. Anything big like that, I like. So you can see where they can't go past this. And they can't go past this either. Um, so I think all that is pretty cool. So again, yeah, I think I'm going to change these occluders, not on this, but these items here. I think I'll make the terrain occluder later, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to bore you with that. So next, let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens when you render an image too dark in Fantasy Grounds or in Dungeon Alchemist, rather. OK, so same map we've been looking at through this entire video. Notice that how dark I have it here in Dungeon Alchemist. I went over here to the lighting, turn this lighting down here so that the torch lights really show up and except that the statue and everything back there um, really can't be seen. Looks really cool, right? It'd be awesome if you were using Dungeon Alchemist to run your games because then you can just turn the light up however you want. Like if my players come into this room, I could just turn the lighting up as they're, you know, carrying torches or whatever. The problem is that Dungeon Alchemist is not a VTT, and the creators have said that they don't plan on it ever being a VTT. And um, if that ever happens, if that ever comes to pass, it's probably going to be way down the line. Okay, so we've got this pretty dark in here, and I've already exported this over to Fantasy Ground. So let's take a look at it. And you're going to see why this is a problem because the darkness has been rendered into your image. So now it doesn't matter what kind of lighting you put in this image. It's not going to matter at all. The lights will not affect it because the darkness is baked into the image. I'll show you. So let's go ahead and get a light here. And uh, let's just go ahead and add a new light in. Let's say I put another, well, let's put a lantern in. Lanterns um, have the highest, um, um, Lanterns have the highest um, radius for the light. So let's do that. I put one here. Notice that it doesn't affect the lighting at all that's in the image because again, the darkness has been baked into the image. I could move this around. It's not gonna do a whole lot to light up the image. It'll do a little bit, sure, it does a little bit, but what do you do when your players ask, hey, how come our torches aren't as bright as the torches down here? How come they're not lighting this up? I mean, what are you going to say? Oh, it's magic and that's why it's working that way? No, you can't do that. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of this light. Let's go ahead and bring our adventurer in. And let's give her a torch. Let's take a look at this. So let's make sure she is selected. We're going to give her a torch. Okay. 
She's got a torch. Oops, I forget to go over to play all the time. Look, same thing as our, our lantern we put in before. It's lighting up a little bit, but not nearly. I mean, you can see the radius of the light, but it's not nearly doing what you have down here. And once again, it's because this lighting here and this darkness up here have been baked into the image. Um, so that's going to be a problem in your games. What if we take the lighting off of her? Okay. And whoops, let's go to token light. Okay, make sure we got her selected. We take that off. What if we give her dark vision? Let's go to token vision. She's got dark vision. Let's make sure she's selected. Okay, same thing. It's going to light it up a little bit, but you're still not going to get much. So this is exactly why you don't want to make your maps too dark in Dungeon Alchemist when you export them over to a VTT. Again, I only use Fantasy Grounds. I don't know how it's going to work in Foundry or other VTTs, but I have to imagine that the principle and the concept is the same that the lighting down here and the darkness are built into the maps. So it's not going to matter what kind of lighting you put on the tokens or in the map. It's not going to light it up. So just make sure that when you're exporting your maps, you've got the, the light set um, at a decent level. It doesn't have to be bright. Um, what I would do is make it maybe right about here. And that's what I did. A little less than halfway, you'll be good to go. Um, so, okay, next, last thing I want to talk about is how um, not every object you put in a map in Dungeon Alchemist is actually going to create line of sight. So let's take a look at that next. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, I've got a nice little outdoor area, a nice little small forest that um, doesn't really have a path or anything through it. It's just a very quick forest that I, that I made earlier today. And I've already exported this over into Fantasy Grounds, and I did the usual um, export settings. Um, let's go here and I'll show you. I did Fantasy Grounds, did my perspective, did my render lights and image, and export the VTT, did high quality, did all that. What you're going to see is these trees don't have occluders, and you have to put those in yourself. So let's go over to Fantasy Grounds, and I'll show you. So here's Fantasy Grounds where I've already exported this map. Let's click on occluders. We've got nothing. So the thing here is don't think that every object in Fantasy Grounds is going to have an occluder with it. So what you need to do is you just need to add these in yourself. What I usually do for trees, and I'm just gonna do a couple of these, is I just kind of guess where the tree trunk is and how big I think the tree trunk should be. And I'll use the wall occluder for this. Um, so what I usually do is I just kind of go like this, like this, like this, da, 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 and just connect them together. And if you've got trees that are close by, then the trunks may be kind of joined there. Um, these look like some big trees. Um, I don't know if I want to have the trunks, you know, that close together. Might be kind of cool for an NPC or a player to try to squeeze past them. So what if I make this one like dun, 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 dun. Oh, forgot to get rid of that one. Let's see if I can get it to connect there. No, it didn't. So we'll have to zoom in and connect it. All right. And then now you can use a circle occluder if you want. And if you think that's going to speed things up for you, which you could do that, that's fine. I just don't like making perfect circles. For all, for all of my occluders. So I could do this and that could be a bigger trunk. Here's a smaller trunk right here. This could be a smaller one. It's gonna be okay if it goes off the map. And that's another thing we need to talk about actually when you have to put occluders in yourself because notice there's no outside occluders. So what's gonna happen is if you don't put occluders on the outside of this map, your players are gonna see all the, all the whole void right around them. So now that we've thought about that, let's go ahead and put in a wall occluder here. So let's start about right here. Since this is have terrain that's, that's uneven, we kind of want to go a little bit inside of it. And so let's do this and let's make our occluder right there. That actually looks pretty good right off the bat. So I'm okay with that one. And I think that's going to do, do it, be it for, um, 
this will do for showing you guys how these are going to work. So let's bring in, um, first of all, let's put in, uh, turn on the lights. So you notice there's no lights. Okay, but that's okay. Because one setting here is ambient light. And you can change the ambient light color, I believe. Let's see if this actually works. Nope. Okay. So what we might have to do, oh, hang on a second. Yes, there is. Uh, let's do sunlight. There we go. I was trying to add that in myself and that wasn't working. Had a little brain lapse there for a little bit. Okay, so let's see what happens if we, let's make sure we enable our line of sight right there. And let's bring in our adventure and let's see what this looks like. Now I'm kind of doubting myself. Do I have a grid on this? I don't have a grid. Let's draw a grid real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and put this in. And this is one good thing about using uh, Dungeon Alchemist is that the grids are perfect since it's virtual software and you're not importing it from a printed screen so that I, it works really well for doing the grids if you want. So when I do put grids in, I just don't change the color. I make them gray and just lighten them down a little bit. Sometimes I don't even have the grids showing. And then because the grids are already here on the um, on the um, map itself, it was exported with grids. So I don't really have to show the grid here like I do this. I could just leave that and it'll still work. So let's come over to play. Let's bring Laura in. Let's see what happens to Laura. And we're on player preview. So notice you can't go past here. That does look kind of weird. So I'm not sure what the players are gonna see there, but that actually looks kind of normal. Um, I think the only reason why it looks weird, I think for the players, it's gonna be fine. It just looks weird. We're the DM, so we can see past that. It just looks weird because we have the occluder inside the map. So notice that I've got the tree trunks here, and this is really cool if the players want to hide behind a tree trunk or if you have an NPC hide behind a tree trunk like that. Um, if you have players who are rogues or NPCs who are rogues, um, I love using goblins um, in this regard because since goblins can actually do the hide, um, they can hide as a bonus action. I love having goblins go behind a tree and then come out fire and then as a bonus action hide again and then if the players can't see them, have them move around. That's another advantage of using a VTT because in more than one session, I have had players look for goblins that just kept hiding from them. And when they finally pass their perception checks, sometimes there'd be a goblin like one or like right next to them or a couple squares away and it surprised them. But I had a lot of fun with that. Um, goblins in 5e are actually um, just their abilities for low-level adventures are really fun to play with. So you could have Laura Croft just coming through these woods, and then there's a goblin hiding right here. And if her passive perception doesn't make it, or if she's not actively rolling to look, I mean, you could have a goblin just hiding here and just pop out and just get her, you know, with a, a short bow or with a crossbow. So... Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that sometimes when you export from Dungeon Alchemist to a VTT or to Fantasy Grounds, that not all not all objects and, and terrain objects are going to have occluders. That a lot of times you may have to put those in. So just be aware of that. Again, in a future video, I'm going to show you on my temple map how I put the runes on those uh, tiles. How I'm going to do that um, so uh, I can recreate um, the Reckless Steps puzzle from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. If you have enjoyed this video, please, please, please like and subscribe so you can see more content and you never miss when a video is being released. I would also love it if you would come over to Twitter and follow me on Twitter because I do announce some things on Twitter and I do like to pull my audience and just get some thoughts from them and maybe you guys can help shape a future video. So please come over to Twitter, join me and, um, Let's hang out. Let's get together. Thanks again for watching. I'm Paul Postal with the, the Digital Mapmakers Academy, and we will see you next time. Take care.